Welcome to the Counter Narrative Podcast, a show designed to change the way we talk and think about education. By sharing stories of successes and triumphs, we aim to challenge the dominant narrative that often negatively portrays our disenfranchised populations. I'm your host, Charles Williams, an educator for 15 years, a current school principal in Chicago, and an educational consultant. Let's get started. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Don't believe me? Here's five reasons why. First, it's free. Second, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. Four, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And five, it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. In this episode, I chat with Jennifer Apple an educator, author, coach, speaker, co-founder of award-winning culture, and chief heart officer for the Teach Better team. She is also the author of Award-Winning Dog. Jennifer is driven to create an environment where all students are able to learn and become passionate about serving others. Through her leadership, her school was awarded national and international awards for creating a culture of excellence through kindness, service, and empathy. During our chat, Jennifer discusses how she was leading a school that was over capacity and how she implemented a comprehensive approach to SEL using the Character Strong program to address the school culture and climate that was beginning to buckle under the weight of so many people. She shares some practical tips such as her school's house rules of character, excellence, and community, as well as the importance of maintaining a positive attitude. Jennifer also stresses the fact that everyone can do this work by starting simple and focusing on just one thing. Enjoy. Hello, Jen. I am so excited to have you as a guest on the Counter Narrative Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is a fun new project for you. This is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, I think you are like the fifth person I've interviewed. Um, so hopefully that novelty does not show in this conversation. But <laughs> <laughs> very, very excited. So but before we jump into much, um, would you mind just sharing with our listeners a little bit about yourself, maybe your role, your journey, you know, and maybe just something interesting about you as a person? Yeah, um, I have been in education for, I'm finishing my 21st year in education, which is crazy to think about, um, that I've been there that long. Um, Currently, right now, this year, for the first year, I have an innovation coach. It's kind of like a classroom support teacher, um, is what other districts kind of call it. Um, And I kind of help with technology and innovation and things like that. And before that, I was a classroom teacher for the last 20 years. Um, And I've basically taught every single subject, mostly all in middle school. I did teach elementary for a year. I was in fifth grade for a year, but mostly sixth through eighth grade. Um, I started teaching math and then I moved to social studies, history. Um, I've taught reading. My current, right before I moved into this innovation coach was an ELA teacher and social studies, Um, a leadership teacher. I was a leadership teacher for the last three years or so. Um, I've taught study skills. I've taught remediation, taught pretty much everything you could imagine. Um, And then I've also been, I was a college professor for a while. Um, I taught actually with my dad, which is kind of a cool fun fact. Um, My dad was a principal for 30 some years um, and he and I actually team taught classes together. So he was an elementary principal and I was a middle school teacher. Um, And so we taught classes to people in the education program going into teaching. So that was really fun to be able to have that experience with my dad. Um, And then I'm a reading specialist. So I have a master's in reading. I have a degree in reading. Um, I have an elementary ed degree. Um, 
I am the chief heart officer at the Teach Better team. So I get to spread spread happiness around the team. That's basically my job, which is kind of cool. Um, and then right now, currently, um, my husband and I are writing three books. He just wrote, he's written his book, which will come out the end of May. And then I have my book coming out the end of this year, 2020. And then we have a third back third book coming out in 2021. So pretty exciting. Okay. You know, actually, I had a note here to ask you about your uh, your book series. Would you mind sharing with us the title so we could be on the lookout for those? Yeah, yeah. So it's all award-winning culture. Um, that's kind of our brand and stuff, what we do. So the first book is award-winning culture. That's my husband's book. Um, and it's kind of an overview. What I would say is um, – it's kind of the beginning of how you create an award-winning culture in your school. Basically, it's it's a step-by-step everything that we've kind of done in the last like three years at our school um, to create this amazing culture that we have. Um, my book is the second book. Um, it doesn't have a title yet, but um, it's basically from the teacher's perspective. So my husband's book is more like the whole school perspective. Um, so this is what you can do as like an entire school. This is kind of all the things you can do. Um, my book is very specific to teachers. So it's all the things that I do in my classroom to create this award-winning culture and what my students do and how I kind of took that on. Um, And then the third book is more of um, like outside community, like how the community and other things, they can create this culture as well. So it kind of goes beyond the school walls. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, And, you know, I am a big fan of the Teach Better team. In fact, yesterday I just bought my Teach Better hoodie. So I'm excited for that to come (laughs) in. And, uh, you know, I want to say thank you since I didn't get to tell you yet. So thank you for the sticker. It is on my Chromebook. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, that's neat. I'm I'm glad that I get to I get to do all the fun stuff, like send out the cards and the thank yous. And that's that's the fun part of the job. (laughs) (laughs) I, I completely understand. You know, I, I have a great team at my school and oftentimes the students are like, oh, Mr. Williams. Yeah, he's the principal, but he's not he's not like the the bad guy. That's the right. dean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, he, nice? and, <laughs> and he gets so upset and he's like, hey, th-, and I'm like, hey, you, you know, we both can't be bad cops. You, know? yeah. like, <laughs> you got to have a good cop. I guess it's me. I get the fun exactly. one. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jen, awesome. I, 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 I. You're obviously doing a ton of great work, you know, but with the at school, you know, in your roles, you have the award winning culture. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you're using your position and these, um, I guess, avenues, if you will, on how to challenge the narrative that is out there that is so often, you know, kind of painting our groups of our students in a bad light. Right. And and yeah, I think that. um I think as educators, we have to change our narrative. You know, I think we have to be positive because we all got into this because we love kids. <laughs> so everything, you know, we talk about should be positive, right? You know, I mean, it doesn't matter what's happening with these kids. We we love them. That's why we're there. Um, and so I think with the reason my husband and I wanted to write these books is because we wanted to get the message out. You know, our, our school won some national and state awards. Um, and so we were kind of recognized for our culture and we thought, well, we want other people to feel the way our kids do coming to school. You know, we, we want other people to have students that go, I love coming to school. You know, we, we had a, um, a parent that had a student at another school in our area and they, um, basically like drove by and were like, I just want my kid to come here. Like I, I see how cool this school is because we were outside and we were greeting. We always greet every morning and we were given high fives and we had music playing and they're just like, they were just drawn to our school. You know, they just wanted to go there. So I want other people to feel that way. Um, and so that's why we're writing these books to give people the tools to be able to do it because anybody can do this. You know, this isn't, it's not a secret. Like <laughs> it's nothing that we've done. That's like, oh, it's just you. No, no, no. Everyone can do this. And so that's why we've created this. And we go and speak at schools. We, um, we do, like consulting. So we'll evaluate your school and say, hey, here's some areas that you can improve on. Because to be honest with you, our school wasn't award-winning like three or four years ago. So we had some problems. We had a lot of fighting. We had a lot of issues with our culture. And so we made the conscious choice to make a change and to make it so that kids wanted to come to school and make it so that 
um, our culture was a positive one instead of negative. And so we actually made that choice and made that change. And so that's why we're going out and you know, we're going to speak at schools, we're going to conferences, we're trying to get the message out there that you can do this. This is possible. Um, this is something that you can do at your school to make a change. Absolutely. I mean, culture is a, a huge thing. I mean, I think it's a powerful statement for you to say that somebody was just simply driving by, you know, right. and, and saw mm-hmm. the things that you were doing and were like, wow, I want to be a part of this because, you know, I, I don't know about you or other places in the country, but, you know, Chicago right now is experiencing this like absence of students, right? Everybody's leaving the city. Um, and, and so to be honest, it's become kind of a competition on right. how do we make sure our enrollment stays up? How do we make sure that we keep kids in our building? And one of the things that has helped us, you know, it was exactly that, that, that culture that just, yeah. I want to be there, which has so many other positive impacts. Because the one thing I noticed you didn't say was, you know, you didn't talk about academics or curriculum or, you know, yeah. pedagogy or any of those things, no, right? Yeah. It was just that, that, that culture. Right. Yeah. And that's, I, I mean, I think SEL, um, social emotional learning to me is way more important. I mean, and, and that's coming from an ELA teacher <laughs> who's teaching kids to read and write. I mean, if, if I can't, if, if the kids aren't able to function and they aren't happy to be there and they're having so many other things they're thinking of, they're not going to learn anything I'm teaching anyway. So why would I even be teaching these, this reading skills or these writing skills or whatever I'm teaching when they're not ready, ready to learn? So no, by teaching SEL... I mean, you're teaching the whole child. I mean, that's the new key phrase, but it's true. I mean, we have to teach the whole child and relationships are so important. You have to have that first before you can teach any curriculum, any subject area, anything else. It's the foundation of everything. I really believe that. So, you know, I have a question. I I mean, obviously you've been doing this. So do you have any, you know, success stories, any any kind of like, hey, I, I know this kid was here or, you know, this teacher, you know, wasn't on board, just maybe, you know, a a success story that you could pull out of this? Yeah. um, (laughs) There's a lot of um, different success stories. I think, um, I think one of them is one of our, um, one of the kids that was in our podcast, we run a student led podcast that we've run for the last two years and they interview leadership leaders around the country, et cetera. Um, And one of our podcasters came to middle school and didn't have um, a great experience in elementary school, is what I would say. Um, They weren't a super huge fan of school. Um, And they got involved in leadership in my leadership class in sixth grade. And and they've said this on many of the podcasts, that it basically changed their life. I mean, they really understood why they were there in the world. I mean, they got to the point where they were like, I understand my purpose in life. You know, I understand I'm here to serve others. I teach servant leadership in my leadership class. And so this student was involved in a lot of different service projects we did throughout the year. And um, they just said, you know, I, I really understood why I'm supposed to be here at school. And they started doing better academically. They started doing better in their sports. They started doing better just all around because they really understood their purpose right? They knew why they were supposed to do be there. I had the students do um, Simon Sinek's Finding Your Why. I had them actually present to the staff and they did a whole lesson on to the staff of how to find your why. And so they had the teachers go through the whole process of finding their why and they they came up with a, a why statement that they could post in their room of why they wanted to be a teacher, et cetera. And those kids really understood also what their why is going through that process and then teaching it to someone else. They're like, oh, okay, this is why we're doing this because we need to understand why we're here, why we're working, what we're, our purpose is, right? And so he really understood that. And, you know, I, I don't know that he would have turned out, he's, you know, going to leave into high school now. And I don't know if he'd be the person he is without having had that leadership and that culture that we have at our school. He's just excelled and just become a really cool person. Thank you for sharing. That was, it's inspiring to hear those things. Yeah. Uh, so Jennifer, obviously, and I, I like, you know, earlier you mentioned that this didn't just happen, you know, it was over the course of about three years or so. So can you share with us just 
you know, what are some of the obstacles that you uh, and your school have, you know, faced as, you, as you've been trying to build this culture and really just change that, you know, that, that story? Yeah, it's um, it started about three years ago. We had um, we were we're not a super big town. Um, we're kind of a medium sized city. We're not a large city. We're just kind of a middle of the road. We're not a tiny city either. Um, but our middle school, we were built for about 750, 800 students is about how many would fit in our building. Um, and about three years ago, we were at 1,200 students. Oh, wow. So yeah, a building that was built for about 800 had about 1,200 students. We um, had teachers in closets. We had teachers like I was teaching six period day. Um, all of us, they, they couldn't they couldn't actually hire another teacher because we didn't have enough rooms. We had, I think, like five portables, six portables, something like that. They were all full all day. Um, it was insane. I mean, we had 1,200 students in this one building. And you can imagine when you have that many and you don't have a great culture, um, you have fights, <laughs> you have um, things that happen that shouldn't. I mean, you can't even, you couldn't even get through the hallway. I mean, it took you five minutes to get between classes because there was three different grade levels convening, trying to get through into different hallways. I mean, it was, it was just crazy. Um, and so that's when we decided the new middle school opened down about a mile away from us. Um, and so our population went down to normal again, kind of about 750. Um, and our free and reduced rate went up quite a bit when the new school opened. And so we knew we had to make a change. We, we had to change the way we were doing things and it was a good time to do it. So um, we implemented a lot of um, different programs and things. One of our big things is we have house rules. Um, and so our house rules are character, excellence, and community. It's like three words. Um, and each of those, it basically comes with um, character, excellence, and community. There's like three questions that we ask students, um, with that. And one of them is, will you do the right thing? Um, the other one is what we do for others. And then will you do your very best? And so we basically, it's very simple. We don't have like 500 different rules. Like we don't have a bunch of other things. It's just simple, like three statements. Um, and we have the kids kind of look at those questions. What does that mean? So what are you going to do for others today? What does that mean? When a student drops their binder, are you going to walk over it, you know, step over it and keep going down? Are you going to kick the binder, you know, make it worse for him? No, I'm going to stop. I'm going to help him pick it up. I'm going to put all the papers back in the binder. I'm going to close it up. I'm going to say, do you need help to class? Right. And I'm going to have 10 people stop and help with the binder because that's what we do. Right. So those are the kind of things that that we established right at the beginning of here's the rules that we kind of the rules of the house that we all follow. And here's some examples of what that really looks like for kids. The other thing we did is we also got a social emotional learning program, which I suggest everyone get um, some sort of program where you're teaching lessons. We got character strong is what it's called. Um, and it's an amazing program. John Norland, Houston craft, are the ones that created it. And we teach that every week in our advisory class. So we meet with our advisory once a week and we teach, all we do is social emotional learning. Like that's all we teach for that time period. Um, and you actually have the same teacher for three years, which is really cool. Oh, nice. So I got kids in sixth grade when I first started and I've, this year they were eighth graders. And so I had them for all three years, an hour every week for three years. You really get to know the kids and you form those relationships and you can have serious discussions with them. You know, like, why is this? I saw this. What, how does this happen? So I think that really made a huge difference is really making that intentional effort of we're going to teach this every week. We're going to connect with these kids. We're going to stick with them, you know, and we're going to support them through their entire middle school life. Right. You know, that that's powerful. I was just thinking about that. You know, we, we had a parent just yesterday who told me, you know, I, I want to commend one of your teachers because even though my child is no longer his student, you know, he wanted to make sure that, you know, I came to for material distribution, that I got the materials that I needed. And she was like, that's pretty awesome that, you know, there's still that connection, even though they're no longer technically, you know, his student. And so I can only imagine the power of meeting with a group of students once a week, every year for like three years. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. And we, that's another thing we do at our school is there are kids. 
Right. They're not my kids, right? Like, it's not my kids. It's our kids. Like, they're all of ours. It doesn't matter whose class they're in. If you've never even had them in class, they're our kids. Like, everybody, you know, takes credit for every kid in the school. It doesn't matter who you are. You get to know everybody in the school. That's really important because I think a lot of people like, well, it's my kid, you know, it's my class or whatever. And it's like, well, no, everybody in the school is our <laughs> class. You know what I mean? Of like, course, we're of all, course. yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, Jen, I'm sure there are some people out there who are listening to this and like, I want that, right? I, I, I want to be able to have this amazing culture in my building, yeah. you know, and outside of just you know, buying the books, yeah. you know, do you, <laughs> do you have any like quick tips or just suggestions on things that somebody could start today on, on just creating that same type of culture? Yeah. And I would, I would say the biggest thing is to start with one thing you're going to change, right? So start with one simple thing that you're like, okay, I'm going to change this one thing. Okay. So so one of the things I started with when we when we first started doing all of this is I was trying to think of leadership like events that I do at our school. So one of the things I did at our school was I did this like hot cocoa. So it was like a reward thing. We do use PBS rewards. So they could like spend their points or whatever and they could get a hot cocoa, right? And so I just had a little hot cocoa stand in the hallway and in the morning they could come by and grab one and they'd go to class, right? So they'd pay for it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take that one piece that one thing I do and how could I make it into more of a cultural event and to teach servant leadership? So I took the hot cocoa and I made it into the wildcat cafe is what I called it. And basically I took my room and I made it into a cafe. (laughs) And so we got like cheap tablecloths and we put them all over the tables and we had little like spots and I had um, flexible seating. So we had couches and chairs and all this cool stuff. And then I put the hot cocoa things on the side of my room, like plugged in and I had waitresses and I had baristas and I had hostesses um, and I had centerpieces at the table. Like we did the whole thing. It looked like a cafe. I had this big sign that said free Wi-Fi. Um, and it said like you had the menu, you know, I had a menu board so they could order. Um, and I had hot cocoa and you could add a marshmallow, um, or like whipped cream or something. I can't remember. And then I had apple cider for those people that didn't like hot cocoa. And so I had like a couple choices. And so my kids, my leadership students would work the event and it was only, you know, the 20 minutes before school started and they came in. And we had, by the way, we had a line in the hallway. So we had, I had to rope it off. Oh yeah. (laughs) I had to rope it off. And like the kids started lining up, like we start school at eight o'clock. So at seven 30 is when I started and I had kids like arrive by like seven, seven 15 and they were sitting there like waiting. I have a picture of kids like sitting in line waiting to get in. And so I'd have the hostesses and they would greet the students and they'd say, hi, welcome to the Wildcat Cafe. Um, How many in your party? And so then they'd say, I have three people. And so they'd say, come with me. And they'd seat them at their table and they'd say, oh, your waitress will be with you. And so then I had waiters and waitresses come over and they would get their order from them. And then they would go to the baristas and get the coffee. And I I got those cheap little coffee cups from um, Oriental Trading, you know, and had the little lids so it looked like an official like store. And then they would take the coffee, you know, the cocoa to them and they got to sit and Sometimes I just had music playing. Other times I had the band come in and there was live music. So I had like two or three students come in and they would play their saxophone and, you know, whatever. And so we would have live music and it was just like a super cool, fun event um, that the kids loved. But the best part of it was they were learning to be servant leaders. So they were understanding how to serve others in a respectful manner. So all of my students, when we were done, they were like, this is the coolest thing ever. I understand what you mean now. I understand what you mean by servant leadership. Like I'm helping others. This isn't just I'm handing them a cocoa. Like I'm asking them how their day is. I'm looking them in the eye. I'm telling them, um, you know, getting specifically what they want. I'm really actually like interacting with these people. And so they really understood what it meant. And I just took one simple event. It wasn't a big deal didn't really honestly cost me much more money, didn't cost, I mean, more time, but that's about it. And I took that event and I made it into, okay, now I'm serving other, I'm, I'm doing this servant leadership project. So I think that's what you can do is pick one thing you're already doing probably, something you're already doing that you can make it 
So it focuses on relationships. It focuses on that servant le- leadership aspect. And then that will start to trickle down to change everything. Because every time we did an event, guess what they wanted to do? Oh, no, no, no. We need to do this. We need to do that. Like they wanted it to be just like the cafe because that was their basis. That's what they base everything off of. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So thank you. You know, I, I think so often that there are people out there who want to start well, big one, right. um, you know, and, and want to try to just create something. And so often, like you, you, you have the ingredients that you need, Absolutely. right? Look internally f- and, and figure that out. And so I, I think that's awesome. You know, I, I want to visit your cafe one day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, the kids were like, well, can you sew us like some aprons? So that I said, sure, I will sew you some aprons. And like, yeah, I got them the little pads of paper so they could write down because like, we really need to be able to write down everything. And yeah, they were so cute. Like they would improve on it each time we did it throughout the year because they were like, oh, no, no, we need to do this now. And then, yeah, they really got a kick out of it. And they they learned a lot from it, you know? Yeah, well, I think that, th- that that's the other part of this, right? Is that you never know the full capabilities of your students until you allow them. And so, you know, the I, the fact that they were like, Let, let's do this, let's do that, let's take right. it to the next level. And, you know, they really have these capacities that we will never, ever know. You know, had you stood at your little stand, you know, right. n- none of this would have ever occurred. No. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think we underestimate them sometimes. I mean, when when my husband and I thought of the idea of doing the student-led podcast – there was a lot of people that are like, you're crazy, like middle schoolers, like 12 and 13 year olds. And we're like, okay, maybe, you know, and they are amazing. I mean, if you've ever listened to any of these podcasts, I mean, you would not know these are 12 and 13 year olds until you hear them talk about all of a sudden their phone or something else. And you're like, oh, you know, they are a middle schooler. Yeah. But they, I mean, they're so sophisticated in their questioning and their answer. I mean, it's really impressive what they can do that. I mean, I, I think that's the thing is these kids crave this. They oh, yeah. want to have a purpose. They want to have a why. So we need to give it to them. I mean, we need to have them be okay with, you know, being their, their true self. It's okay to be you, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Jen, you know, through all of this, I mean, clearly you guys have had some successes. So do you have any shout outs, anybody that you want to recognize, you know, somebody that deserves it and, you know, this is their time, you know, shout out their names, organizations, whatever it may be. Yeah. I mean, I think one, I already kind of shout out to them. Character Strong is an amazing SEL program. Um, Houston Craft and John Norland, they're they're just great. Their their curriculum is amazing. It's I would recommend it to anyone um, that's looking to do SEL. Um, the other person that is awesome is Andrew Epperson. He's with PBS Rewards, um, and he has been so helpful in all of this transition. We decided we kind of went like jumped all in when we did this because the other school was opening. So we thought, okay, let's just do it. Um, And so we got PBS rewards that year. We got character strong. I mean, we just kind of like jumped all in and those guys have been so supportive of us and what we've been doing. Um, And then obviously like the teach better team being involved with them, you know, they're awesome. Um, All of those guys just so, so supportive of teachers and, and just wanting you to be yourself. You know, that's the one thing I would say about all of those people is that they really encourage you to be the teacher that you are, you know, that you're okay being who you are um, and being your best self. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, I, I'd agree. And I, I would even say just teachers. I know at one of the conferences, oh, yeah. you know, I, I sat down and Ray and I had a heart to heart, you know, just about mm-hmm. my ventures into, you know, consulting and everything that I'm doing. And, you know, it was really nice because, you know, she's like, you don't just be you like, don't, don't try to latch on to everybody. You don't have to know everything. Like just find your thing and run with it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I should, sorry, I should correct myself and say educators, not just teachers. (laughs) Sorry. I tend to say that since I'm a teacher, I tend to always say teacher, but yes, educator is correct. Yes. So, uh, you know, as we begin to wrap up, um, Jen, you've shared a ton of information with us. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that there are people out there who, you know, would love to learn more or to see the work that you're doing, maybe see some of those student podcasts. Yeah. So can you share with us how they can find you and follow you? 
Yeah. So um, Twitter is probably the easiest because that's the one I'm on the most. Um, and it's just Jennifer M. Apple. And I spell Apple funny. It's A-P-P-E-L. Um, so you can just find me on Twitter. On Instagram, it's award-winning culture um, if you want to go to there. And then we have a website as well, awardwinningculture.com. Um, so you can get a lot of information on there. That's where all of our podcasts are. Um, my husband and I do a blog. We'll have our books up there once those are published. Um, I also have a, a secret. I have a children's book coming out too. So oh. um, that'll be on there too. So um, we'll have a few things that, I mean, you can access everything from the website. That's probably the best place to go. And that's where you can find out about consulting or um, speaking. If you want us to come to your school, anything like that, we'd love to. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. And Jennifer, not just for being on the show, but for all the great work that you're doing and to help to really, you know, just put the story out there of the great work that's actually happening in education each and every day. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I want to thank you for listening to the Counter Narrative Podcast. If you like what you're hearing, please be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow the show on Twitter at the CN Podcast and the host at underscore CW Consulting. Take care.